Project ST and NIMB, Father, we thank you a lot. We thank you for the previous week. Within the, um, the week, Father, we had so many activities. We thank you for a successful graduation. We thank you for our, our brethren who, 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 who graduated safely with um, the various classes, Father. We thank you for the traveling messages you granted unto them when they were coming on, on, on campus and when they were returning to their various services. We thank you for seeing us through the weekend, bringing us to a new day and a new week. We are praying and commenting now today unto you. We ask that you forgive us with all righteousness and cleanse us from all iniquities. As we, we have started our worship, we pray that may you come into our midst so that our worship today will be a perfect one unto your name. Our hearts and our minds are in your hands. Continue to direct us into our righteousness and we shall grow to become Christ. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for ending with our success today. Through the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Right. How are you? All right. So, um, thank God for another week, another Sunday that we get to come together as a family to learn and to um, As you know, so you walk up. Um, we are still talking about spiritual attitudes and all things meaningful we would what's that? We would uh, try to finish this week or maybe next week. So before we get into what we are going to discuss today, uh, let's as usual, remind ourselves of what we discussed last week. What do you remember from our discussion last week? You want to start? So, what I took from the lesson last week was um, how we, the, we um, differentiated the spiritual family from the biological or historical family mm -hmm. and I learned that my allegiance should be more with the spiritual family than with my, my biological family and I also learned that anyone who is part of the spiritual body of Christ is part of the church is my brother and my sister and I have to do everything that I will do for my biological brothers and sisters I, have to do the same for them also. That's what I did. Yes, thank you. And I think that's the point we wanted to. Uh, Gloria, welcome. We wanted to. Uh, the point we wanted to. Did it be across? Put across. I mean, it's a make across, it's a put across. Yes. Yeah. So we, we, I think, does anyone have any challenge with that point? That, yes, no. I think I'm a person now. I'm without notion. I think um, it's not wrong to have that. You pay your allegiance to the family. I think when I was reflecting on what we learned, I think it's good to have that. But the, the issue with me is how to accept that this is my home. Uh, so seeing my brothers, Sapere, um, accepting that Sapere is my true brothers, my elder brother at home. That, that is the issue I have. But I, I can still carry all the issues here. I should pay allegiance to my family. But which family should I accept as like the real family? Like, is that a question? No. I, I don't know what no, I No, no. Like, I understand the struggle you have, okay, um, to accept the fact that your spiritual family should. Um, should be 
prioritized or that should that should be your you should place premium on your on your spiritual family uh, uh, than your biological family you must grow and god allows us time to grow to that understanding to that appreciation okay so if you are struggling with that idea it's okay just keep on and, and don't just struggle in your mind study further explore scripture and, and, and pray maybe a time will come you come to that uh, uh, that that resolution that understanding because so whatever struggles we may have with any biblical idea we should not be in a rush to seek resolution the way you feel about the subject is partially based on your your knowledge and understanding about it but as, as, as you as you grow as you grow as you read as you explore over time it becomes normalized you get it so just just keep that tension going not just in your mind but read about it as well pursue it first and let's okay yes um but when i was also reflecting on what you talk about uh, when, when uh, maybe you are putting a premium on the spiritual family as i think the physical family then it means that i i am anticipating that the spiritual family not against uh -huh. all right so vis-a-vis -vis your in relation to okay maybe I will anticipate that the spiritual family should also accept me as a brother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I was discussing something with Morris and he was like, some, some churches are not functioning as a family. So if you, you prioritize uh, in favor of the spiritual family, it means that and you come and they will, they will not accept you as a family, then you will wander around, you have problems. So, that 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 reality is there. We, we must we must also accept that. that the church also has a responsibility to function as a family, the, the way God intended the church to be. And so that complementarity should be there. It should not be. And again, I think we are talking in terms of congregational culture. I understand that. Uh, what do you want to say? So I think we we should understand the context in, in which Christ has made that statement. Fine, the church should be a community that accepts any of its members that um, warmly welcome them and pays um, their dues to each individual as um, they are due. But the issue is the church can function properly if the individuals in them are responsible. And we should be speaking to ourselves as individuals first. Because if we are practicing all this we are learning, in essence, the church would be practicing it. So what was Christ talking about? We shouldn't focus on the church as certain aspects, but we should focus on making the right choice in the circumstance. So it's, it's, it's not like we are putting our biological family here and the spiritual family here and we want to compare and know where we should belong. We, that is not the case. We belong to the spiritual family, we belong to our biological family. But Christ is saying when we want to make a choice and the biological family is being a hindrance to us choosing Christ, then we should forego that and go ahead with the spiritual choice. That is what Christ is trying to help us establish. At the point, some people came to him that they had a biological family he was supposed to prioritize. And he decided to choose that which belongs to God at that particular moment. It doesn't mean he was running from that family or he was being outside the family. And we should note that that kingdom, that spiritual family that Christ said he belonged to, they rejected him. Say that again. They, they were not um, that welcoming to him. Which, which family? 
God's people, the Israelites, the king of those he was trying to convince. But he was always in the synagogues and other places preaching. They did not welcome him warmly, but he didn't care. It, so it's only about choosing to do the right thing, choosing to belong to God, not the reception over there. It should not necessarily be so. So we should have that in mind. Um, Bojo, do you understand what you say? And the only challenge is, I, I don't, you know, now, I, the context you are right. At the time, Israel was God's problem, the spiritual problem. But that has transitioned now into the church. You get it? So, what I understood uh, Moses to be saying is that it should not be the type of reception you get from the biological family that will determine whether you make a choice for the spiritual family or not. You get it? Um, it shouldn't be us against them. You get it? But the point is, um, when those two families, the demands of those two families are in conflict, your natural inclination is towards the spiritual family. You get it? Uh, in, you know, like, in this world, people make spiritual decisions based on their biological family. You know that. In the West, it is, it is so common for somebody to say, I'm not coming to church because a leader has a challenge with my father or mother. That should not be the consideration. Uh, so even though when you have come to know the truth that you know, why? Because my biological relationship is, is towards that direction. Those are the kind of circumstances where we must make that choice. You get it? Um, so, who is my brother? Let's come to that understanding that you are my brother. And irrespective of blood um, issues, whenever you need me, I should be able to, I should willingly, without any hesitation, do what a brother will do for you. you get to, let's have that understanding. And, um, what Moses says is valid, but it doesn't also take away the, the, the reality that as a church, we must strive to create a culture of brotherliness here. I think that it must be an intentional leadership action to get the church to behave, to function like a family. That makes the choice easier on us. So, and again, he's also right. If the church is making that effort, effort, are you also, as an individual, willing to contribute to creating that culture here? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, there is a collective responsibility, but it trickles down to the individual. Jennifer, congratulations. Yes, come up to your last one, then we'll move on. So, yes. you were the listening term to what my religion was saying the other time. Uh, it seems like it's very difficult to do, to place premium on your Christian family as compared to your biological family. But we also, we also establish the fact that we have to consider the church functioning. And how will the church function? And we discussed in the corner that we have come to a point too individualistic to the extent that we can function again. But we also established the fact that it is as a result of lack of resources that the church finds it difficult to function as a family. Because if there are no resources, automatically the person give his allegiance to the church company, at a point you will have challenges with resources. You will go back to the biological family. And that is where the biological family will have advantage over what? Over the church. So we were looking at it from the angle that why can't we as a church, as Mr. Bedou was saying the other time, find a way as a family to uh, in terms of employment or getting a job, what to do 
so that we all get concerned about each other when we all graduate or when we find a way, I look in the world, but we find a way to place everybody on a job, something doing, so that we can function as a church. So we're looking at solutions on how to function as a church. I think before we came, we had a staff that Richard has, it appears he was part of the staff. Yeah, yeah, he was part. He had raised that concern. And I, yes, those challenges are valid. Yes. But if, if we all became conscious of that reality and we, we decided to cultivate that culture of family in the church, yes. Resources will be scarce. We don't have what we just pocket. That's true. But where there is a will, there is a way. We can coordinate resources to ensure. We may not be able to satisfy everybody's need. They get it. In terms of jobs, in terms of all those things. But at least people will notice that the church is, is trying its best to help in, in resolving whatever challenge that we may have. So, um, yes, in some ways, we can begin to look at those directions, you know, having a constant, um, a good rapport with our alumni, having a database of how many of them are working in places, and then maybe connecting those who graduate with those people. It, it's something we can consciously and intentionally start doing. Yes. So, um, I, I think that as we discuss some of these things, it, it must feature in the policies that we decide to um, implement in the church elsewhere. So we can also uh, establish a fund, and that one should be managed by some alumni or something, to be establishing businesses or jobs, something that will be helping to be employed because in our society, you know, it seems like unemployment has been the order of the day. Yeah. So, Obviously. practical solutions that are organizing the church does not invest in businesses. That's yeah. the notion of this building. Well, it's, um, Tamate, it may not be there now, yeah. but the challenge is you and I. As you are growing up, Senyamiya, I don't know if you are. It seems to me, what would we be willing to do? All right. So, I think we have had a good discussion. Uh, if you are conflicted, that is okay. Just sit with the conflict. As I said, don't explore. Begin to study. Begin to read. And see if there will be a, a resolution to that conflict. But my current understanding of scripture is just that the spirit is, is greater, higher than the flesh. And that comes with the decision we make in terms of our, um, our family. So, for me, and let me state it so you don't get any sort of abuse. For me, I believe the church should be a family. The church is a family. And, and that, that is how we should behave towards one another. So, sometimes when we are in one one, one in terms of material, who do you say? Expect that you should be better. Or come because of time, but he doesn't want you to solve the family needs. So, um, and let us, in this conversation, I hope we'll stop all those uh, on, on wise competitions among us. For what? Yes. So, my point is Could you? the biological family. But we still take them as a biological family and then we live and then love them. So why don't we also break that thing? And the PRGs are sorry, is able to help us and turn the baby who said we are part of. Sister, right? That's that's a good point. So but we should also make that point. Yes. We should let us stick with that. Say, no matter the situation, the church is our family. So we treat it as we treat our. And I want to advance your point. The Nintia, I'm on 
one of the challenges, who's a well, who's there now? You, you have this attitude because you don't have another family. They get it. Oh my no Baba. Oh my now. They get it. But now when it comes to church, we have alternatives. There is competition. They get it. And that is how the devil has money to to so, sort of split into a bar, not to a year. Then you go to the, the next uh, available option. And so that so now we, we the, the spiritual family is for sale to the highest bidder. We, we make spiritual choices in terms of the church, usually based on some of these considerations. And here I'm millions of workers here. And here I'm scholarship in here. Those are some of the things. So the point to have, it's, it's for us. Oh my, no, Papa. And yet every time we need to be our red amount. I know someone can say, oh, yeah, mommy, do. Or it will be. But when it comes to the church, hey. So let's be very careful. Sometimes the alternatives the devil offer is not the best. It is just to draw you away from where you are supposed to be. All right, let's move on. When we, the last attitude that Peter mentioned in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, that's where we are spending some time. In verse, um, in verse 7, is love. So, now, for this very reason, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. And in your knowledge, self control. And in your self control, perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. We have discussed brotherly kindness. The next virtue we are supposed to inculcate, develop, is love. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the concept of love. Course. I believe we we know quite a lot about love. Now, what kind of love is he talking about? We have managed to bring out a lot of different kinds of love, right? What kind of love? Um, what is so, these are uh, some of the Huh? In the New Testament, when you read about love, it could be any of these words. They, well, some people want to establish strict differences between them. And yes, there are some differences. But we must also know that there, are, there is some overlapping, overlap in terms of meaning. Errors. They say it's romantic love, the love that exists between um, lovers, between the, the, the Victoria and uh, Alison. <coughs> then they have um, stores, the love between families. They say uh, philia, brotherly uh, love, the affection between brothers and sisters. And then there is agape, which I think is 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 the ideal kind of love. Now, beyond or apart from errors, I think that stoge and philia are all motivated by unconditional love. I'm supposed to have unconditional love for you as a brother, right? And so there is some overlap in the meaning. You, you, we cannot establish strict differences between these kinds of love. Except errors, I think. But what differentiates the meaning is the context within which it is used. Context always determines the meaning of a word. What is God? Yes, I've talked about God. 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 But the word that Peter used is agape. It's a derivative. Derivative, a form of agape. So, what Peter is saying we should develop is the unconditional kind of love. That God. Perez, next one. Uh -huh. So, this kind of love, agape is the spirit enabled act 
of the will by which we treat other people with active benevolence. So when we have this kind of love, we don't treat people based on any kind of consideration, what we can get from them, what uh, the perception they may have about us, how people may see us. It, it is just merely seeking their best, seeking to do the best for them at any point in time. Sometimes we are tempted to express love for people based on certain considerations. True or false? Dorothy, true or false? Considerations like what? If the person likes me, and so our kindness, our love is for people that we think like us. Or we may, may, may me work for Nana cousin. What? Or what? Me need a few crew back up. Or me need a year there. All those kinds of considerations. But Peter is suggesting that for those of us who are Christians, we must grow to the extent that we do good because it is the best thing to do. We show love because it is going to endure to the benefit of whoever receives that kind of love. Sorry, next slide. Uh, next. And clearly, it is not by accident where Peter places love. Why? Because in First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, what does Paul say? He says, if I If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy bone or a clinging symbol. In other words, irrespective of what I do as a Christian, if the motivating spirit is not love, it means whatever I am doing is is meaningless, like Ecclesiastes. And so, moral excellence, self-control, knowledge, whatever, if the motivating spirit is not love for God, love for self, and love for others, then all those virtues are, they are now and void. They do not have any spiritual impact or value. Uh -huh. Richard, what's on your mind? Um, the spiritual virtues we are talking about are expression of love. Expression, they are supposed to be. Don't take it for granted. Huh? I tell you, oh, Richard, you know better than I do that not everybody has faith based on love for God. What? All those things, uh, perseverance, we don't persevere because we love God. We don't persevere because we love others. Not, you cannot say that. So, if the foundation, in other words, alright, go to the next point. In other words, love is not only the last and the greatest Christian virtue, it is also the glue that holds all the rest of them together. The quality without which all the rest will be less than they should. So any spiritual virtue without love is less than it. It takes something away from it. So you hear Morris talking about motive. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What is the motivation? What is the drive? What is the force behind it? If, if that is not love for God, if that is not motivated by love for God and love for God's people, a friend of mine will say, 
wasted, useless. A end to no spiritual force. So I want you to imagine something. Perez, next slide. Let us imagine all these virtues with our love. So let's go back. Let's go back and imagine these spiritual virtues without love. When I say without love, without love being the motivation. What, what would it become? I, I have no note today. I want this, I want to draw this from you. So faith, imagine faith without love. What it, would it become? If our faith in God is not motivated for, by love for God and love for others, this faith will become what? Uh -huh. Oh, well, you don't have to struggle. Just look at yourself. Just look at myself. Because it's not every time that my actions are motivated by love. And when it is not motivated by love for God, it shows in a certain way. Ready? Remember what? Tell me. We don't look far. Yeah. It, it's, there's a word for it. Look warm. I'll take that. It's, it's like it's like a robot functioning. You are doing so because you have to, but there is no you know, I said, oh, on the way being of our mind. There's no way you be out. Oh. And you always find an excuse not to do what you are doing, right? Then, oh, sorry, I'm a fan Ah, my God. What's it? Mmm, baby, the cat. Mmm, me, I. And then, no check. Mwanzu wa soya yako jina ufe bie mwanzu wa tseni nsana Nchiba kwa soni nsana Nchiba kwa soni nsana Nchiba kwa soni nsana Nchiba kwa soni nsana Faith is not motivated by love for God Oh yeah yeah Because faith works right? If you obey if you are Kudu mfi mfi na No maya nye nye mfi nye 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 for God, not have for fellow human beings. What about moral excellence? If it is not motivated by love, what does it become? Hmm? Ah. My, my, my mind is sent to Matthew chapter 6 or 5. 5 or 6. Where Jesus pointed to the Pharisees and suggested to them that whatever good they want to do, they do it so that they will be seen, right? <coughs> Moral excellence without love is, is, is self advertisement. It's, there is another way to it. Look at the chino. She's shining. What else? Godliness without love is what? So godliness cannot be without love. It can't. There is no godliness. There is no godliness. Well, you may think you are godless, right? You, you are lying to yourself. You are mocking yourself. No, we are not self justification. It, it, it may even lead to legalism. Some legalistic orientation. What about self control without love? Me, I think it will lead to asceticism. You know asceticism. Maybe one day when we study Colossians, we will come and explain that. Um, asceticism is the belief that when you abstain from pleasure, leisure, and 
treasure that lends you access to God. So it is based on how much you are able to treat yourself. Then you have an unhindered access to God. It can What is brotherly kindness without love? How am I sure of? Oh, yeah, there will be. Yes, and I think it will also mean you, you do things out of pity. It may also lead to competition. Yeah, so all spiritual virtues without love become something else than the idea. It's dangerous. You see, I have some human who say, who will be at? But always look into yourself and ask. What is my motivating spirit? So, brothers and sisters, it is not good enough to have these things, but it must be founded on the right virtue. Because if you have all these things and you are without love, you are just a noisy gong. You are just making noise. It is meaningless. It is useless. It touches nothing before God. So that is why Peter was wise enough, because the Spirit enabled him to write to put love at the end. It doesn't mean love is the least. No. Because without it, there is still a problem. It is a love that brings a full stop to every spiritual value that we have. Precious. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you are in the name of the I don't think it's a good one. I'm going to ask you what motivates you to take pictures. If it is your love. <laughs> All right, next, uh, most, next slide. So now, with that said, you go back. What is I'm first of all, be at Now, with, with the list that Peter made, I'm asking this for, now, just relax, sit in your chair, and think about this. What is Peter trying to tell me with this list? For the avoidance of doubt, let's go back to the list. Verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, he says, now, for this very reason, for this very the reason he has indicated above, also applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self control, and in your self control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. Now let's push stop. What is Peter trying to tell you? Trying to tell us? So spirituality is not an event. It is a process. A process that you must keep on and on and on until such a time that you are able to first achieve all these things with the right motivation, love. Because it is possible that faith in God may not begin from love for God. Some of us came to faith in Christ, not because we love Christ so much, but our parents pushed our circumstances. But if we kept on adding, a time will come where we would be moved by the right spirit. So, the tendency for us to think that we have arrived spiritually 
Peter is saying, cannot be the case. And I'm what? Sometimes we think by mere virtue of coming out of the water, we are there. But that's not the case. There is always a conjunction in our spiritual growth. We must keep on adding something. There is always something to be added. So those of us who seem to have a false sense of accomplishment and contentment, Peter seems to be saying that, hey, look again. Because some people will say that, show me, Bennett, when you are here, I'm not Awadu. Someone said that show, show me a thoroughly satisfied person and I'll show you a failure. For those of us who are tempted to think that we are satisfied, accomplished, achieved, there may be an end still waiting to be added. So spirituality is a process. What else? What do you think Peter is saying? Mm -hmm. This is the practical part. Definition of words. So what does what should this mean? We are coming. Yes. So to change your command. So, what can they have? Perez, go to the next. You see, some people have a minimalist approach to Christianity. Oh, say, me to me, I'm sorry, Sunday, I'm not fine. No man, I'm going to be real. Say, I'm okay, and I'm what? Once I'm a genius, I'm going to be. It is okay. But Peter seems to have a different notion. For him to be adding end, end, then it means the minimal is not what is expected. Something else. You see, some people are only content with the assurance of not going to hell. Now, some of these guys in the hell. So once that is over, I am okay. If I say, you know, having faith in God is not enough. The minimum is not enough. It will not get us there. It will not. And that we must constantly be pushing ourselves to be like Christ in the fullest measure expected. Christ is not only a person of faith. Is everything that has been described here. And then as a Christian, if I would be worthy to spend eternity with him, if for nothing at all, I may not be perfect in all of them, but I must be seen to be making an effort towards it every day in my life. So brother, sister, if you are here and you are content with the minimal, it, it is not enough. And this will bring us to the subject of, of grace and faith. Yes. And we'll come to that. I know we cannot do enough to inherit salvation. That's all. But I also know that we cannot cross our legs and sex without making an effort and also end that. We must be seen to be making an effort. We must be seen to be growing. <coughs> and so, any other? No, I can't. Is it? Excuses are like belly buttons. We all have one, right? But yours is not better than mine. Nobody, nobody's excuse. This, this plate is good. Ah, God would accept without question. 
Peter is saying that faith in Christ is a spark. It's, it's, it's the beginning. It's a spark. When a car sparks, it's, it's supposed to move. It's supposed to add mileage. It's supposed to change position over time. And so faith must spark an unquenchable desire to know and be like Christ. Faith must be the spark that leads to spiritual growth. Having faith without growing is, is a travesty of faith. So if you have faith in Christ, yet you are not growing in any of these spiritual virtues, it's like a pala, odidi, zoni. The scientific name is Christianity. We have come to faith a number of years, but we are always showing faith in appropriate action. It is, it is inappropriate, number It's the same way. You expect a certain basic behavior. class one, I was almost which make A, B, C, what? One, two, three, up to ten. But only your class five. They be ABC in one or when you let this over just do this. That's the same with many of us. <coughs> we seem not to be moving away from where we are, where we started from, where we came to know Christ. Faith must be a start. Again, next lesson. What Peter is trying to question. Yes. Yeah. No, there's a comment there. Okay. So this from um, Yvonne Grace. He said, she says, um, yeah, if you do not have love whilst doing these virtues, you can't even do it to the end. When something bad comes your way whilst undertaking these virtues, you easily get off the track. Mm -hmm. but, when, but when there's love, you are always highly motivated. Yes, love, when love moves us, it moves us to finish whatever we start. That is why did not stop Christ from going to the cross because he was moved by his love for God's people. Another thing we can learn from Peter's lesson is this. Our spirituality must be balanced. Sometimes we pick a virtue and we elevate it over and above every other virtue. So that's, that's, that's okay. But oh, my German, my excellence. What about Faith. What about godliness? What about the others? Oh, some them call evangelism. That is okay. It is good. But is that is that all? Some of them here say, but what about the rest? Spirituality must be balanced. We must. We must develop a certain balanced sense of our spirit because the spirit has several facets. It is not limited to only one aspect. So whatever you are able to, that is good, that is great. But the first thing is, ready? Is that all? Victoria. Is that all? Who is now with me? I am. It is here. Is that all? Most of us want to eat a balanced diet, but when it comes to spiritual growth, we think a one way kind of thing is okay. And yeah, if you like, do an analysis of um, churches. You see that most of us are comfortable with unbalanced spirituality. And that is why I have an issue with the divided church. People will say having a lot of churches helps, but it feeds into our, our unbalancedness. Me. Because 
You see, one person cannot have everything. And so when we are divided, we need the other part. And so we must. Let me come. Every congregation resembles the strength of their their leaders, and they also pick up the the weaknesses of sin. Who about this congregation? The leaders here, our strength is 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 visible, and our weaknesses is also visible. But if we were to tap all the resources available to us, if people were not so entrenched with their territory, and we say that, oh, this guy is good in this area, let's bring him. This guy is good in that area, let's bring him. Over time, we begin to grow in whatever areas that we and, and our spirituality becomes. Get it back. Then we die. The next question is this. As we are reflecting on what Peter wrote, how do we cultivate these spiritual virtues? How? Do you think Peter means what he says in verse 5? Where he says, with all diligence, make every effort. Peter seems to suggest that we can achieve all these things on our own. As the Americans would say, by our bootstraps. You pick up yourself and you do it. You think that is what Peter is saying? So the question is, how can we achieve this? How can you achieve this? How can we achieve this? <laughs> <laughs> By being self-conscious. I think uh, naturally we do not have this, and we may even have certain qualities, but we are not uh, as compared to the height we are trying to attain. And we know someone who has all this. So we need to stay connected to that. So we have to get closer to Christ. We need to strengthen our relationship with him and learn more from him. Thank you. I think Peter envisages a dual kind of approach. Yes. Marriage, and then we'll go on. And I saw a, a good illustration, and I'll, I'll share it that helps. So, um, I want to agree with what you've already stated about the and this putting it down that the foundation. I think that, as you said, we mostly feel comfortable on what we are good at doing, and we mostly 
trying to project that over other relatives. Um, when it comes to, for instance, when we are having a family meeting, we realize that when we are discussing the program for various ministries, you see that the women ministry are interested solely in their program. The Mandalay ministry is interested solely in their program. The Mandalay, the finance, for the but identification, you, you realize that there's some sort of competition over resources so that uh, certain programs will be achieved. And that is where the love comes in. Because we fix the program we are now. It, it doesn't project the ministry you know, to uh, become uh, the overall thing. And so, whereby sometimes I try to, I try to set my attention from evangelism. Look at, okay, women ministry, we are the concept of women. How can I contribute to it so that the only person we need to say, hey, yeah, I can help. Maybe a uh, uh, evangelic and uh, benevolent ministry, they don't offer to do it. But we unconsciously want to define what we want to uh, project at all costs. And that is where it, it, it's kind of reflecting almost our character as well. And uh, the strength, uh, truth, and uh, the weakness, uh, fornication. So, we don't even know what you do with man. But if you see no one or what? Oh, if you need. True telling one or what? But when it comes to fornication and the uh, uh, yeah, uh, kind of. Oh, what can you say? <laughs> Every sin has a past. Every sin has a future. Yeah. So, we tend to, I have to say, we pick and choose. The challenge. That's the challenge. And so, with all that you are saying, I, I think we must begin to sort of now filter whatever we are doing through others. Is it possible that now we can get the the education ministry to look through some of the programs of other ministries so that I don't know, maybe, but you, uh, Morris, thank you. Let's go on to to how the how. I That's understand okay. young people are interested in the how. That's okay. Yes. Uh, there's a comment on the, the on that question mm -hmm. from, from Grace. She said, she says, also, I I think if we don't have them within our craft, we can learn them. Now, now that the Bible is teaching us to have them, as we also know the importance of having them and applying them in our lives. She's talking about adventures. Yes. I think that is the beginning point. The decision that I need to develop them. I, I need, we need to have them. But after that decision, how do we go about them? Now, I have listened some passages. There is always a struggle between what the spirit is, should do and what we must do. There are some strands of Christians that believe that even the Yanipa or Isha and also Jacobna or Kato, so we can come out very early naturally. And there are some who think that the spirit has no rule at all. There is that polemic, that tension. The Yanipa. Ah, you, you, you. Now. I think in the sense of Christ, not like we don't believe in the Spirit, but we are not sure what role the, sp the Spirit is supposed to play in, in our spiritual growth. As one became man, can't hear like the Ambabe Christ, nothing. You get it? It will be kind. We have become very shy about the Holy Spirit and its language. It makes us feel uncomfortable. If you are not careful, you may be branded in a certain way. But when it comes to these virtues, we have our role, and the Spirit also has His role. And we must position ourselves in such a way that both roles would blend together to ensure that we achieve these 
uh, rule. Now, somebody has said, and just think with me if it makes sense. Spiritual growth is like using a computer. You see, no matter how sophisticated the computer is, it cannot operate itself, right? Somebody must sit behind it. But in the same way, if a computer is not connected to a power source, it is not going to start at all. Therefore, as Christians desiring to grow, we must be connected to God's Spirit. How? By exercising all the avenues, praying, Bible study, worship, fellowship. All these things have a role to play in our developing these virtues. In that same role, if you pray, if you worship, if you study, but you do not have the orientation, if you do not Open yourself up for, for God's spirit to work within you. What would become of all those things that you are doing? So, one kasa Bible no ain't me, baby Adam ain't me, and nanti, and the way manam what you must go take it, open it, and begin to study, right? You must decide that I, I'll go for worship worship services. So there is that human part to all of it. We have a role to play. We must have that, we must make that decision that I, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But as we engage in that activity, then God also has his role. Through his word, through his spirit, he works within us to wrap whatever truth that he, he sees. And so, our understanding of achieving this must, must be extremely balanced. We must recognize that God has a role. Because almost everything we are talking about, according to Paul, is a fruit of the Spirit, right? So the Spirit within us must be found into play, must be allowed to function. But we must also you must also come and to be filled by the Spirit. There must be that desire in you. There must be that predisposition. That's the word I'm looking for. If you do not predispose yourself, forget it. Or, oh, as I draw, I say, forget it. The greatest barrier to the Spirit's Working us is our mentality. Hey, you know the girl I did that you might need a crap crap. The money, no, 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 no. So we must be gained by renewing our minds, letting the word of God to dwell in us richly. Treasure. Sometimes, yeah, one we are trying to be aware that it 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 Yes? Why not pray, man? Jennifer, what do you have in your mind? <laughs> Let me ask you. As, as part of your, the things you want to achieve in the next five years, do we have any of these things as part of the list? We have the glory as a man. Yeah, so what is it that you want? Papa, we come. Oh, yeah, sure. Papa, what kind of friend? So, that's that's the beginning point. If, if these spiritual ambitions are not part of you, 
It will never happen in your life. Yeah. Young people, we are. You see, your life will go in the direction of your desire. Number. You are too young now. You are too young now. You are too young. Is there a woman who wants to have a perfect effect? Because that's all you want. That's all you desire. Some of you are too busy. You are too busy. Exercise is a woman. You are a woman. You are to project your 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 flesh. I saw my big enemy. What? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. We have more spiritual ambition as young people. So I think the noise is too much. And we enjoy the noise. Okay. And you see, the devil is so smart. He has personalized the noise. You can have your earpiece and enjoy your own noise. I am who? They are with cassette. I am the Asian, the Zunyan, the Shino. And you see, all that the devil has to do is to make you to close your ears to the spiritual voice. Yeah. 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 That is, you see, I have, if, if, if some of you had my cousin more eyes to see anything, but sometimes we are so oblivious to the obvious that things, and you might not end my name, you also do that is all that we are desirous of. Most of you have no spiritual ambition. If it, the world is making spiritual ambitions, they have a name for it. Let's wait and say here for. first one. Your first school, no more No more Show yourself approved on to God as a weapon, weapon man that means not to be afraid, right? Personal responsibility. Allow me to flow a bit, okay? I have things on my heart that I need to tell you as young people because why not one man to the left? Why not one man to the You are growing in a well, you have it. But you are so unbalanced. Sometimes when I talk to you and I hear the things you have, and yet, and yet, oh, what is it? Yes, no, 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 Guys, we are going to is that you know tomorrow is not what? Yes. Promise. You do every good you have to do today. So, Chinaba, Amen. I'm my wife. Most of you think that uh, the next 10 years is, is an insurance policy your father has got for you. What's this? What's this? Ah, 
these are not diet products. Okay. Yeah. Then, what are your spiritual ambitions? You see, I have the calm. The calm, man. Let me confess this thing. I don't know whether I'm because I'm a male. I, I have a natural inclination towards females. It's natural. It's natural. I want to protect them. So I do well with what? My cup, my confess that. So it's not a bias. Say, them are being young. And say that I'm fucking busy. So I'm being young. You know why? Because you prepare the next generation of people. You know that. In scripture, the only two women we have read is responsible for the faith of some people we know. Two women, Eunice and Lot. In the Bema, they're not being That's all about the word being It transcends, it's generational. What the whole man, I can tell you, now man's why they have to tell you. So be very careful. So guys, it's okay if you don't have any spiritual ambition, but you give from the day. Set yourself, set every every year. What does everyone say every year? I'm going to try to develop this spiritual virtue. And how do I do it? By taking personal responsibility, studying for myself, connecting myself to God's spirit, and engaging with God's people. Okay? Everything I think I know, I learn from others. Either through observing them or reading about things. But as you start from there, you begin to learn things that you never thought you could be capable of. So don't be content with with where you are. <coughs> Precious. Don't be. Okay? Yeah. So when you ask girl what we are seeing you know, when you dear what we are seeing you know, that's it. That's how she will cry. Then pass on me now. Hmm? Papa? What's funny? When you need it. <laughs> oh, well, you see, do you know that happiness is not eternal? Yeah. I give you a more to know. Every morning you have to do the same thing. And I'm going to say, and I didn't give you a more need to go in the end. And I'm going to say, you. You have to engage in that activity every day before. So, I don't go. I am sometimes. Hey, Mimi Sona, yes, one of them is going to be a rest, you know. I never like it. Yeah. Why do I have to struggle every day to get what? When I can get money and find them, why do they will be able to me and I get but then, no, Papa, my point is this. Why don't you find somebody who can give you that happiness you need all the time? That you don't have to go back and engage in all those things every day. Me, that's my thinking. I mean, you know, I lose control of my mind. Uh, one Christmas, I was very... I felt so uncomfortable. I said, my mum boy, I couldn't control my lips to hold the music. Sadness is not available. I want to be the same. Please move me. Why do you engage in things when you know it's going to help? It's not going to help you. When you know, say, 
This thing would help me in the long run. Being a client, common sense is common, but not common. Yeah, I tell you all these things just to help you to begin to change your mind about something. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is eternal. And joy is not something you buy on the market. Money cannot buy joy. You know that. It only comes from the spirit that you need to do. It is the extent of your, of your relationship with God. Yeah. And then nobody can take your call out in, in a Roman tree. Rejoice. And again, I say, no more portrays that you buy. You have no joy in your life. Let alone to, to tell somebody to have joy. But when you have a strong connection with God, it doesn't matter what is happening in your life. You still have what? Joy. Some of you, for you to have joy, you have to be doing things that makes you feel guilty. And I'm what? Guilt is a mixed emotion, a mixture of joy, of, of, of happiness, and, and sadness. And then how you win the new other day. So, happy sad. Let me end here. I, I hope that thematics, I think it to be fair with you. Let's let him hear As as Kojo, there is a comment. Fine, fine. I hope I hope we will be challenged by some of these things. But do not be content with where you where you are. There is more to do. The minimum will not take you there. You must strive for more. There is more to be given from God's spirit. And I hope that the next generation of Christians will, will be better. That's what I'm hoping for. All right. So that's it. Okay. So I wanted to comment on the law of exercise and practice. Mm -hmm. uh, as Romans 12, 1 and 2 said, uh, it is clear that the things you do the more are the things that every day you like or do, you be a class of Yeah. So sometimes we are students, we are young adults, and the things we face in the world, a whole lot of things we are supposed to do. Me personally, I observe that thing, that sometimes I draw schedules when to read my Bible, when to do this, when to do that. But it gets to a point when academic stuff and other things are becoming, I even forgot that I have a schedule. So it's because I feed my brain with my academic schedules. I forget about my spiritual uh, duties or responsibilities. So if you are able to renew and you are able to keep the spiritual things in mind, you always remember them. Uh, my dad used to say that the things you think about, they are the things that goes into your dream. Mm -hmm. So if you sleep, that is the things you dream about. So it's very true. All right. And so Papa, I think this is where your Papa has been hounding me about the um, me a friend said. Um, the, the, the thing we started where we have um, um, cell meetings. Those are some of the things that would be helpful. Because we really fear, there will be somebody to remind you, and then we, 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 we rub on ourselves. So maybe, maybe it should be something that we would... Uh, Morris, I said, Tamati will be the last person. Yes, if, uh -huh. oh, if there is somebody of mine, sure. Go on. Thank you. From, from, from Daniel Bani says, um, I think for the Church of Christ, our main focus about the Spirit is seen from its fruits, um, other than its roles. And this is from our brother, Edmond Asante. He says, um, I also um, solemnly believe that the condition of the mind ought to be in track with these virtues. We must have the desire and the willingness so that we can understand and cope with, with the Bible, like the computer example you cited. And again, um, I think this in relation to what Antimony um, asked. Preacher, um, it's not everything we will be taught being a kid or infant. We, we've got to explore more by ourselves using the Bible as a reference and make the good outcome. And, and make the good outcomes reflect on our lives in the church and the world we find ourselves. Oh, yeah.
Hey, Edmond, Asante. Alright, so guys, we are done. I hope that we are challenged to, to pursue um, spirituality and to go. Alright. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, we thank our future very much for leading us in the Bible class. The following people will be our participants for today's service. Uh, Gideon Saturday will be our first leader. First prayer will be led by uh, Enoch Rinko. Second prayer, Emmanuel Eliki. Third prayer, Marcos uh, Wallace Sebo. Lost up in the will be led by Enoch Boatin. So first, to be Shata, Tomate, and um, Richmond, and Ponsa. Ostrich. Last video. Um, I think um, last video will be led by our brother, Mr. Bedi. Mr. Bedi is uh, the last video. Okay, if we are comfortable, shall we all be on our feet as we take the Bible reading for today? Today our text will be taken from Romans chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what, is, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. Amen. We will sing three hymns. After that, we will take our first prayer. We will sing English hymnals 88, 55, and 104. 88, 55, 104.
since the words are in different. Okay. Then let's sing the one zero four English. <laughs> 